so even though they've been going back and forth on Twitter for months and just last week agreed to fight each other, Henry Cejudo has Aljamain Sterling over his house. Oh, and Daniel Cormier. He posted this video to his Instagram. In the caption, he wrote, we had some unexpected guests at the Cejudos tonight. Stay tuned. So what's up, everybody? Guess who I have in town? The one and only DC United. I'm up, I'm up to start shit. <laughs> You're not gonna guess who else is up in this joint, the cringe mafia in the cringe mansion. Al Jelaine Sterling, what's up? The king, the champ. That's the champ, right the there. The real king. The champ. Until the king returns. <coughs> two. Here is Dana White's latest edition of hashtag F it Friday. This time, Dana has apple pie nachos. What's up, everybody? It is F it Friday here at UFC headquarters, and today we are trying the apple pie nachos. Fry some sliced tortillas in oil and toss them in cinnamon and sugar. Cover it up with apple pie filling. Top it with shredded cheddar and whipped cream. Oh. If this sucks, I'll never do another Friday again in my life. That might be the best thing I've ever done right there. Oh my God. Incredible. Right here, right now, off the top of my head, that's the best thing I've ever done on Friday. John Jones on Instagram Live discusses the potential fight against Stipe Miocic. John says that the UFC is playing games. We're really just standing here, guys, so you guys don't have to, you guys don't have to watch this if you don't want. It's, it's not going to be very eventful. But yeah, this is what I'm doing right now. Somebody said, when am I fighting again? I'm hoping to fight Stipe, maybe September. I don't really know. UFC's been playing them games. A few days ago, Daniel Cormier interviewed Tony Ferguson on his YouTube channel, and Tony made some comments about Habib. But I want to be real, there was enough film out there for Khabib to take a fight and the pussy's still running. <laughs> I knew you would say something about Habib because I'm sitting here, of course you're going to take a shot at him. Habib has responded to Tony via Instagram. He wrote, last three years, Tony has not won a single round in the UFC. Leave me alone and focus on yourself, stupid guy. So today at the weigh-ins for UFC 274, Charles Oliveira missed weight, weighing in at 156 pounds at first, and then after he removed his shorts, he weighed in at 155 and a half pounds. Charles had an hour to cut off the remaining half pound, and once he returned to the scale, he once again weighed 155 and a half pounds. According to MMAfighting.com, the commission stated that Oliveira will be stripped of his lightweight title, which will now be a vacant title. The belt will only be available for Justin Gaethje to win tomorrow. Dustin Poirier reacted with this emoji. Michael Chandler tweeted, making weight is always hard, but thinking you're on weight, then missing weight, just to have to go lose more weight after you've lost your initial sweat is a living nightmare both physically and mentally. Brett Okamoto tweeted official per UFC, title is vacant, Justin can win, Charles cannot. Paul Felder says, wonder if he still wants to fight at 145. I have nothing against the champ, but this is a disgrace, and I honestly feel most for Justin. What an absolute letdown for everyone in the division. Justin Gaethje posted this to his Instagram story. It's of him weighing 165.2 pounds. He wrote, poor bastard still cutting. I'm back to 65 while he's dying. He better make it. He has five minutes. Donald Cerrone versus Joe Lozon goes down this weekend at UFC 274. Daniel Cormier reacts to the notion that Cowboy may be retiring after this fight. On his YouTube channel, DC said there's a lot of rumblings that Cowboy may be walking away. It'd be a sad day for the world of mixed martial arts if Cowboy went away. The dude has been the old gunslinger, rolling around in the wild, wild west, taking fights anytime, anyplace, anywhere. If there's ever a time where you look towards the end, you look towards the end against a guy like Lozon, who was at the top during your heyday. Cowboy hasn't won for a bit. Interesting matchup. Leading up to UFC 274 this weekend where he fights Michael Chandler, Tony Ferguson is currently riding a three-fight losing streak. This is after being on an impressive 12-fight winning streak. Ahead of the fight, Dana says neither Tony or Chandler are in danger of being cut if they lose. Speaking to the underground, Dana said you're still talking about number five versus number seven in the nastiest division in the sport. So if you look at who they've lost to, it's the best in the world. These guys always bring it. They always come to fight. Nobody's fighting for their life in this one. On Donald Cerrone versus Joe Lozon, Dana has a different outlook. Dana said they're a different story. That one should be the loser, probably packs it up and rides off into the sunset. That I would agree with. 
Justin Gaethje at Media Day explains why Charles Oliveira is less dangerous than Habib Nurmagomedov. Gaethje said they're definitely not the same athlete, and Charles certainly is not more dangerous than Habib. His ability to take damage is not the same, proven though the times we've seen him fight. All my criticism of Charles is from a kid that we were talking about, that we all watched grow, and now we're talking about a man with confidence. It's a different person, but ultimately the same Charles is still there. The same Charles that fought Cub Swanson, the same Charles that fought Donald Cerrone, the same Charles that fought Anthony Pettis. Choices were made in that by him, and the choice to quit was made, and I'm going to give him that choice on Saturday night, I guarantee that. I think that's true, however. Once a coward, always a coward. I'm not calling him a coward, but I'm saying that's, you can't just take that away. It's there. Habib never showed you that, and that's why you can't compare those two. My tactic was going to be to evade against Nurmagomedov. And that's the first and only time I've had that mindset and that won't happen on Saturday. If he marches through me, then good for him, but I won't be moving backwards. That is normal for a fighter. When you choose fight over flight, that's the only way. Yeah, he's done a great job. I think his opponents really made some mistakes. Chandler, I think Chandler whooped his ass the first round, got too overconfident, and that's why the shot was so effective. He forgot how much danger he was in. If they're awake, they're dangerous. Someone on the brink of dying is the most dangerous, especially when they choose fight. You can never take your foot off the gas and you can never be overconfident in the arena because anything, anytime. And that's why I'm such a fan of this sport. One shot. I create car crashes and I am the object with the most force. Same mass, if he wants to play the game, I'm more than happy. He won't. He will have to. This will be just like Tony Ferguson. He will try to get this to the ground and he will be stuck fighting my fight. That's the name of the game. Tracy Cortez in our interview from earlier this week discusses what it's like watching her fiance Brian Ortega fight. She explains why she actually gets more nervous for when Brian fights than when she fights herself. Check out our full interview with Tracy over on our second channel and don't forget to subscribe. I was, I was just curious. I saw that uh, you and Brian got uh, a new house. Is, are you in the new house right now? Uh, no, not right now. He's uh, He came to bring me coffee. Everyone came over to come see me and uh, we're just hanging out. Oh, that's great. Well, I, I was just curious. Is it nerve wracking watching him fight? I've, I've never interviewed a, a fighter in a fighter relationship before. That's always <laughs> blown my mind. Like how nervous do you get as a fighter watching him compete in there? Um, honestly, I almost got more nervous than I do for my fight. And I think it goes back to the whole, um, when I'm in the cage, I'm in control. I know what I'm doing, you know? And watching someone that's, it's just out of your control. You're, you can't help them. You can't be there. You can't. So it was, it was hard. It was definitely hard for me. It was huh. something that I, I, that I was just, my heart was just like pounding out of my chest. I was like, shit, I wanted to jump in that cage so bad. Josh Thompson on the Wang In podcast previews Michael Chandler versus Tony Ferguson this weekend. Josh explains what Tony needs to do to win this fight. Currently, Tony is an underdog at plus 260. Chandler is the favorite at minus 400. I think, I really believe this. Tony Ferguson's got a chance of beating him if he can stay he long. Does. If he can stay long, if he can use, and I, he's got a nasty one. Tony, Tony Ferguson has a nasty push kick. And I don't think Michael Chandler is long enough to reach him to his chin. So if Tony uses that up the middle all day long, Chandler being shorter, Tony being longer, the power of that push kick up the middle, whether it's the gut or the face, it's available there. Michael stands in a more of a sideways stance, but that means the face stays in one spot right there. It's perfect for him to come right up the middle. Chandler's arms are out wide normally. He has that wide hands out position. He reaches when he tries to block punches. All of those things are available. The knees up the middle, because Chandler dips his head sometimes when he gets into brawls. It's all there. It's all there based off Tony being long. It's a good fight, but I gotta be honest, I think Chandler, as long as he fights smart, which of course, John, what do we say about Chandler? Yeah. Are you Guy's entertained? Incapable. He's incapable of fighting smart. <laughs> when, fight IQ, it just, like, it just doesn't even seem to cross his mind. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post future ones. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Tony's student. It says, oh, now Connor has no problem talking about Tony. When Tony was unstoppable, Connor was avoiding him like the plague. He didn't even dare to mention his name. Interesting. The second one's from Dawn2021. It says, I still want to see Connor versus Tony happen. And the final one's from Ashley. It says, yeah, I definitely don't want to see Burns hold Masvidal down for three to five rounds. We've seen enough of that lately. Wonderboy 2 makes way more sense for Masvidal. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured on the next one, all you have to do is comment down below.
If you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen to get caught up. And make sure to go subscribe to our second channel where we post our exclusive MMA interviews.